Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome to another stock market review. I'm Brian Weber and we're going to cover the the fundamental and the technical part of the market in this video. First, I'm going to cover some things to watch for this week uh, regarding economic events um, and then I'll jump into the technical review. So I got my notes right here in front of me and I'm going to cover the economic events that you should be paying attention to this week and start off on Monday, April 15th we have a, f a few events that you need to watch for, mainly Fed speak. So at 5.30 a.m., every time that I mention is going to be in Pacific Standard Time because I'm out here in San Diego. And if you're in Eastern Standard Time, if you live on the East Coast, just simply add three hours to the time that I'm mentioning. And there's plenty of convert conversion tools that you can use on the internet as well. But at 5.30 a.m., we have FOMC member Evan speaking and we also have the Empire State Manufacturing Index. And then at 10 a.m. we have FOMC member Evan speaking and then at I believe this is at 5 p.m. we have FOMC member Rosengren speaking as well. Then jumping on a Tuesday we're looking at the capacity utilization rate at 6.15 uh, a.m. as well as the industrial production month-to-month -month numbers coming out and then at 7 a.m we have an NAHB housing market index, so it's important to look for that. And Wednesday, we got quite a bit of data coming out. So what, there's gonna be OPEC meetings all day. And if you don't know what OPEC is, that's just the organization that governs the production and the supply, or pretty much the supply and demand of oil, of, of crude oil. Um, and all the major parties uh, producing countries um, are going to be meeting in Vienna for it's going to be a two-day event Wednesday and Thursday and they're going to be discussing the production policy for the next six months going forward so it's important to watch for because at 7 30 a.m. we also have crude oil inventories on Wednesday and then in the overall market at 7 a.m. looking at the final wholesale inventories month to month 9.45 we have FOMC member Bullard speaking and then 11 a.m. we have the Beige Book. Jumping to Thursday we have quite a few uh, data coming out actually more than just the US market we have the European market reporting uh, flash PMI uh, services and manufacturing numbers so at 12.15 a.m. This is in Pacific Center time. Remember, we have the French flash PMI coming out, and then 12.30 a.m. we have the German flash PMI coming out, and then the rest of the Eurozone will report their data at 1 a.m. So you have French and German, uh, France and Germany coming out before the rest of the, Euro, the Eurozone market. Um, and that's something if you're trading overnight futures, uh, pay attention to that. That's gonna be Thursday early morning. That will move the market more than likely. And then, Jumping forward near the cash open of the U.S. markets, we have at 5.30 a.m. core retail sales month to month. We have Philly Fed manufacturing index numbers and unemployment claims. And then jumping into, oh, well, we actually have two more. And then at 6.45 a.m., flash manufacturing and services PMI, followed by business, this is at 7 a.m. now, business inventories month to month and CB leading index month to month. So, and then Friday, this is going to be at 5.30 a.m. We have building, building permits and then housing numbers start. And there's also a tentative event, um, meaning it might happen, may not, but it's something to look for. The Treasury Currency Report might come out. And then besides the economic events, this week, well, we actually started last week with some of the banks like J.P. Morgan reporting, but quarter one, of 2019 the earnings season is starting up right now so there are quite a few companies big notable companies that are reporting earnings this week and some of them are I'll start with Monday we have Citigroup and Goldman Sachs Tuesday we have Bank of America Johnson & Johnson we have BlackRock IBM United Health Group and Netflix as well I believe Netflix will be after the bell some one of them that I'm going to be watching especially after the news uh, last week when Disney decided to release their their own streaming services for about $6.99 a month it caused Netflix to drop about 5% and Disney actually skyrocketed I talked about this in the last video last week 
that Disney was looking like it wanted to break out, and it did uh, with news coming out later in the week. And on Wednesday, we have uh, Pepsi, Las Vegas Sands. Thursday, American Express, and Friday we're going. The market will be closed due to Good Friday because Easter Easter Sunday is coming up next week. And one more thing to note before I jump into the technical review is on Wednesday morning, or uh, this is in China time or in the Asia market. This will actually be 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time because the the market HSI market actually opens at 6:30 p.m. I believe. China is going to be reporting its quarter one GDP numbers. Very important to pay attention to that, especially if you trade the Asian Open. And if you're just trading our, the U.S. markets and the futures, make sure to pay attention to that on Wednesday morning, or excuse me, Wednesday evening, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So with that said, let's jump into the technical review. And I'm going to cover just, just the major indices because I'm, that's all I trade. If you guys want me to look at a stock, drop me a comment below and I'll, I'll take care of that for next week's video. All right, so let's jump into the technical review. I have the ES, S&P 500, mini futures up right now. So we market finally broke the 2900 area after testing about four times last week. You can see we, it, we broke through in the early morning session, or I would say like shortly after um, I, I believe it was like 2 a.m. my time, Pacific Standard Time, that we finally broke this 2900, broke through the 2896, which should be strong support now, broke above that, and we did have a pretty bullish day. And the target, like I mentioned last week, I would look to short around the 2915 area. You can see that we actually hit missed the 15 by about a tick. But if I jump into really quick on the, you can just do the hourly, 78 minute hit there, it was a nice short opportunity right back to, you know, support area around the 2902 to 04, that should be strong support. You can see that we're in a nice uptrend right now and I'll probably continue until it is lost. Um, let's jump back on the daily, see where we might go. So I, I do have a target, you see where they have this trend line here and I think 2925 is a pretty good target to have. It is, I believe the high, near the high of this candle right here. That's 29.26. So somewhere around here, I think we might hit that. That'll be the top of this channel. We might have, if it pushes through there, I mean, the market's going to be really strong. And I don't think hitting the near an all-time high or testing the previous one or making a new one is not out of the question. But a lot depends on how the economic data is reported in the U.S. and Europe, and then as well as China. Also pay attention to the earnings to see how, like from the big major companies, how, how they're reporting earnings. Are they growing or are they, does it seem like their business is slowing down? You know, um, but the bank or the, the Fed is definitely keeping this market afloat by being patient with not raising interest rates and which is continuing to grind the market higher. But I do, I would look for, you know, the test this upper trend line around 29, 25, 26. Um, if it breaks through there, uh, I do have some upper targets. If you look at the fibs here, which I think if you draw from the 2866, you can see we hit the first fib target. 2952 is one target that I have. And then if you take even, I believe it was this little fib. Yeah, see, that's why I have the 2926. This is a short measured move, the most recent one. And then I believe that's 2868 is what I would be looking at next after the 52, if this all time high is taken out. But previous support, uh, definitely gonna be 2878. Like I mentioned before, that is strong support. That is the 2018 first sell off. If that needs to hold, and this, you can see this trend line right here, I would just pay attention to this trend. As long as this trend holds, it will continue to go higher. We'll consolidate and keep going higher until this trend is lost. Um, but those are the upper targets I'm looking at. 28.78 needs a hold. Otherwise, we'll probably come back and test that 28.66 and the backside of this trend line or potentially even lower depending on how strong the selling is. But you can see that 28.20 is strong, should be strong support. Then you have the 50 day SMA and then this uptrend line as well that the 200 day SMA might catch up to eventually. So let's take a look at the NASDAQ. 
This is NQ. NASDAQ in a beautiful up channel. Testing the 76.51. That's the high of this breakdown candle when the sell started at the early October of last year. We did have a close above it. So that's strong to me. And I do think the NASDAQ, it, it's the closest one to making a new all time high, I would say, percentage wise. And it does look like. I'd have to verify that, but just by looking at the chart, it doesn't look like it has much to go. But we're we're right on this lower part of this steep trend line. So my my thinking is that we're going to push higher and first test this 7700 area. Um, depends on Netflix, you know. But Nef I think Apple would be a bigger and in bigger influence than Netflix on the earnings, anyways, because it's the biggest company out there. Everyone's always watching Apple. But I do think that testing 7,700 this week is not out of the question and potentially testing that all-time high and continuing to the top of that channel. Um, maybe not right away, but you know, it might take a, a week or two as long as the market doesn't have any negative news come out. But let me just take a look at this FIB really quick. You can see that this FIB target, we've almost hit it, 76.81 about. That would be the first target, but this is the most recent move in these pivots. Yeah, so 7,700 would be my first target. It aligns with this high of this candle, or excuse me, um, there's a pivot over here. I have to go to the left. Yeah, back in August, we first topped a little bit. Uh, that's that pivot I have there. So around 7,700, but if we go a little bit higher, 78.25 is what I'd be looking at next. So let me just get rid of that. Let's look at like support levels that need to hold. Obviously, the 7545 needs to hold to the 7525. This is strong support. But again, look at this trend line. If we lose that, and the trend is lost, it's I mean, these levels might bounce. I, I wouldn't set an order there because the selling could be intense if something negative came out in the market. But those are levels of support. And then you're going to have this 72, 75 area, 7,300, and this 50 to SMA will probably catch up. And that's what I'd be looking at next in this lower trend line, 200 to SMA. So let's take a look at, uh, this is, let's look at YM. This is the Dow Jones futures contract. Let me zoom out just a little bit. So there's this downtrend actually broke out. So I can remove that trend line. And all, you can see all these other, the other indices, ES and NQ, Along with YM, they've all had these downtrend lines that broke out in similar fashions. Uh, so I could, I can definitely, I'm going to keep it there for now because usually the back test, this could be the back test retest right here on that trend line. Uh, that was Tuesday, Thursday, or uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday right there. It's a really bullish candle we've got here. And I think we're going to clear this big red candle on October 10th of last year. So that's 26,472. So if we get above 26,500, I mean, you can see this up channel we're in. This could be seen as resistance right here, this trend line, but definitely the level up here, this pivot similar to NQ, where we first topped last year, 26,820 would be my next target, and then the all time high. Um, I believe that trend line I have is a weekly trend line. Let me just look at it really quick. Yeah, I mean, it's not very steep. Typically, you see on equities something like that, where a breakout could potentially happen at a resistance like that, where we could go significantly higher. So, it's something that I'm I'm watching for in all the indices, where we might have like some kind of breakout much higher to get everyone sucked into the market before the rug is pulled. But that's that's a possible scenario, or it's also possible that we might just continue to grind higher. But you know, it's not out of the question. There's a few scenarios that I'm looking at. Um, but on YM, looking at these two upper targets, and then you have support here around 26,100 to 150, somewhere in that area, and this uptrend line. You want to see that hold, and that'll probably be the 50 day SMA as well. I see how it's tracking it very nicely there. And then the 200 day SMA, and these levels down here, it's around 25,400 to 25,250. So let's take a look at RTY, the Russell. 
Russell a little bit weaker than the rest of the market. It did break its downtrend. It is starting to make an, a nice uptrend. This needs to hold though. And there's actually two trend lines. There's one right there. That one's less steep, so that one needs to hold. And I believe that's the 200 SMA. Yeah, it's like right here, 1575. So that level needs to hold on RTY, especially the 1560 area. Otherwise, we'll probably reset lower. And strong support still on RTY, like I always mention in my videos, because we've been fluctuating around this point. This 1530 area, 1537.7 way back in the middle of October of last year. But uh, I, I, the RTY really needs to get going and push above this 1600 area and close above it and continue this trend up or, or it might chop around or there might be some, could be some weakness coming in on the RTY um, because you can still see that it's, it's in a downtrend, it's trying to break up higher. So it needs to have some follow through, some volume and some momentum to, uh, to help push the bigger indices higher. Because remember back when the sell-off occurred, the RTY actually gave away. All this sell-off happened way before their other markets sold, started selling off. So the RTY is the little girl of the market. Everyone, it's a good leading indicator to see, you know, how the bigger institutions and funds are treating the, the market, if they're putting their money in there or not. Um, so... Like I said, clear the 1600 area, we have a chance to get to this 1625, 1627 area. And then, I mean, it's this consolidation here where we broke down from then 6040.8. I think if I draw a fib here, these two pivot points, you can see the lower fib is this 1530, like I mentioned, don't wanna go below there. First target will be the 1610. And then you see the two thirds extension is the breakdown of this pivot that I have around 1645. So those are the upper targets that I'm looking at, along with supports on RTY. Let's take a look at gold. Gold did what I thought it would do, actually. Let me take a look. If you draw this fib here, I think it was right there. Oh no, I actually have the fib drawn correctly. So like I mentioned last week, I mean, two thirds back didn't clear it. We needed to get above this 1325 for the momentum to be sustained after we, it looked like we were gonna create an H pattern here, um, making lower highs, lower lows. Um, there was some buying that came in here. It looked like we were gonna roll over and test this lower area, this 1263.9. But uh, we broke up and we made a lower high. So, and we sold off pretty bad on Thursday. And I had an inside day, I believe, on a Friday. Yeah. So I can get rid of this trend line. That was the breakout. It was like a three-day trade to the upside. Um, we do have this downtrend line. Gold needs to clear. Ultimately, get above this pivot right here, the 13.15 and then 13.25 to have any momentum to go back up. But you can see the closing below the 50 to SMA. There's some pressure to the downside right here so i actually really like this fib i'm looking to buy gold lower at around this fib extension right here the 1263.9 12 like 1265 ish and the 200 sma and potentially this lower trend line somewhere in this area um because if the equities maintain their strength and continue to grind higher and make new all-time highs people are not going to want to be in gold they're going to want a piece of the equity market because it's it's bullish you know it keeps going up and that will provide a nice buying opportunity on gold um, because you could use it as a hedge as well because as the markets are making new all-time highs and you know there's the possibility that the economy global economy is slowing down um, and it's not a bad idea to pick up some gold in this area you know to hedge your long positions and this is what I'd be looking for on gold let's take a look at crude oil CL Crude oil finally started making lower highs and lower lows. So if you have, we have this trend line right here, oops, let me zoom in a little bit. There's a little down wedge we've got right here on the daily. I don't really like this, uh, this daily candle on Friday. So a lot's going to depend on the OPEC meetings this week, any chatter that comes out on Twitter and news that's released. 
and the crude oil inventory report that comes out this Wednesday at 7.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. That This should be strong support, the 63.40, 63.30 area. Um, it's the backside of this trend line where we broke out, broke out from. But if that doesn't hold, I would look 61.80 to 62 is pretty strong support on crude. And then you have the 200 SMA in this uptrend. So I'd look for strong support in this area for a bounce if we sell off to there. Um, or we could be actually be creating a flag here to go higher, to break through the 65 area, to get to the 65.75, 65.74 area that we tried to bounce back in middle, the end of October of last year. And just that's had a three days of green buying, couldn't push it higher, couldn't clear 200 SMA and just sold off down to the 42 level. Um, but do need to break above this high on the 9th of April. Ultimately, even this day on Friday, because that's a there's not much volume compared to the other days, say this day. But that candle was a look above the previous day, and some selling almost closed as an inverted hammer, or um, kind of looks like a hanging man. So I I would expect us to go lower, but how much lower? I mean, there's probably going to be some buying opportunities on crude off this 200 SMA and trend line right here. Um, so that's what I'd be looking for on crude. Um, be clear the 65.74 for some reason. You have the upper part of this range around 68, um, even 67, 70 area. Just the highs and the opens or closes of these upper part of the candles right here. Um, and extreme support is this trend line right here. And these previous, like the $60 area and the 50-day SMA. I mean, the trend is still up, so I would look to buy the dip off the trends, the trend lines and whatnot. And short at more resistances. You haven't had many good short opportunities. At least on Friday, there was a good one, but most of the time it's been uh, pretty bullish. Let's take a look at the dollar. This will be the last one to look at if you're a Forex trader. So, dollar is creating this triangle. It's also kind of like in a down channel right here, but the major uptrend right here is creating a triangle overall with this upper pattern right here. So dollar is continuing to consolidate, it hasn't broke above this level that I mentioned last week that could potentially trigger a breakout in the dollar. Still looking at that, um, but uh, the trend, you can see we were halfway back on this FIB that I have and tested almost the 50 day SMA. We made a lower high so I can draw a, from this guy, down here that's the trend line that needs to be broken for the bulls and you can even see uh, this trend line right here it's creating kind of like a wedge so is it going to break down down to this trend line down here or even this support first around 96.50 uh, or this 200 SMA and trend line or, or is it going to u-turn come back up and try to break above this 97.20 area because you really got to clear these last three candles, the highs of them, to get back up to this channel, the upper part, to have a chance at testing this 97.517. So, I mean, it's kind of range bound, stuck between here, this 95, uh, the 200 SMA, and this downtrend line. So it's just, it's coiling for a bigger move in either direction um, coming soon. But until then, you could just trade the range more or less between the major uptrend lines and the, this down, the near-term downtrend lines that we have here. So that's all I got for you guys. Um, if you guys have any questions, just let me know. Drop me a comment on this video. And you can also send me an email if, uh, if you want at contact at brianwweber.com. Be more than happy to answer your questions. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, just go ahead and click that logo or my face that's popping up now. I appreciate all the support from you guys and I look forward to sharing another video with you all next week. And I'll, I actually will be releasing more videos on a small account challenge that I'm doing with $3,000 trading futures, mainly ES, NQ, and CL. And I can give you guys some tips and update you on the progress of that, as well as now being a funded futures trader with Top Step Trader, uh, I'll be able to share more info as well on that. So. 
Um, enjoy the rest of your weekend, guys, and good luck trading. And I'll talk to you guys next week with another market review. Take care.